Heart and Hand is brought to you in association with Five Stars Promotions. If you want to see their latest events featuring former Rangers players, then just go and visit them on Twitter, which is at Five Stars Limited. That's uh, Numeric Five Stars LTD, or search for them on Facebook. Welcome to Heart and Hand, the Rangers podcast, the podcast that only feels like it lasts longer than Brexit. This week on Heart and Hand, Turgid at Tyne Castle. Welcome to Heart and Hand, the Rangers podcast. My name's David Edgar. I'm your host, as always. And joining me this week is the mellifluous master of merriment and moth himself, Mr. Martin Ramsey. Martin, before I ask you how you are, any chance you could change your name to maybe Mamsey, um, <laughs> just to make my alliteration complete? Anything for your alliteration. Yeah, how are you doing, David? I am not too bad. Uh, rather, kind of blue i suppose after uh, the performance yesterday at Tyne castle um we'll try and cover all aspects of it and that does mean you know we'll try and put it in context it's Tyne castle blah blah the tough place to go all of that kind of stuff but i just think it it was okay for it to leave us a little bit flat yesterday because we'd been doing so well uh gone to the top of the league two points clear and I, I think the manner of the display took the wind out of people's sails. I, I don't think well, there's obviously going to be some Martin that are, are permaraging anyway, and mm. uh, they just need something like this and it sets them off. Uh, they, they seem to thrive upon it. But I think for everyone else, it was more just a case of disappointment. It wasn't rage the way that you get after a defeat. It was more... <sighs> yeah, uh, we thought it was going to be different this time. Uh, this time when we we get a gap or we, we get ahead of them or it feels like we're, we're, we're making progress. Um, we, we I guess, just hoped and I actually expected, I did. Yeah, uh, me too. Unusual for me, but um, uh, it could have been a big statement day yesterday. Um, getting ahead the other week, we have this break, Celtic have a big win at home, okay, we've had a couple of big home wins as well, that will happen over the course of this season. We go somewhere that you would normally earmark as being difficult. And not just a result, but a, a performance that would have left us going, right, these boys can do it. They, they've got what it takes. Um, and I, I did expect a, a degree of a comfort. If We say it all the time, but if we turn up, we, we win these games. And it really is about us um, now that we, we have that bit of comfort. Um, we, we have that bit of um, wee bit more stability back in the league after two, three years, whatever. Um, so that was the disappointing thing. It's the same old, same old, same old start, same old tempo issues, uh, which I'm sure we'll we'll, we'll discuss. Um, so yeah, it was it was more of the same. Was was the the, the big disappointment, I suppose. We'll come to the the actual match and what went down itself, but I think we'll begin at the beginning. It seems a sensible place to go to, with the manager saying the first five minutes were the worst he'd seen from his Rangers side. And uh, he was maybe a little bit of hyperbole, uh, but he wasn't far off. Um, Rangers were atrocious uh, at the start, uh, as Hearts, as you would expect, at Tyne Castle, Tyne, Tyne Memorial, came out the traps at us. But Rangers were very passive in that spell, this isn't the first time this has happened, even this season away from home, Martin, that Rangers have a, a problem away from home. And occasionally at home, uh, Livingston jumps to, to mind, uh, Celtic jumps to mind, of setting the tempo. Now, I will, will be honest, someone asked me this. I, I, I don't know. I've not been in a dressing room. I don't know why some weeks they come flying out the traps and some weeks they don't. And having spoken to a few ex-players, managers, etc., we're fortunate enough to get to do this in this job, neither do they. Mm -hmm. And the person who works this out, I think, will become a very rich man or woman because it it does seem that they'll say they'll say to you, you know, you train hard all week, you're aware of what's going, you're geeing up in the dressing room and you go out and it just doesn't happen. And I think we saw a little bit of that yesterday in the uh, big English game, Manchester United-Liverpool, where Liverpool people expected to come out and, and have a real go, and they didn't. 
But for Rangers, it, it's happening too often. And yesterday was the first time it really, I think, worked against us because Hearts did get a goal in that period. And I suppose the only good thing you can say about that opening 10 minutes, Martin, was if they've got a second, I really don't think Rangers were coming back. No, probably not. Um, it, it's a part. It's less so a pattern at home now where it, we, we did have some sticky moments Um Last season, where we we got bogged down by by teams really sitting in, we have learned some lessons. We have other players and other options now, and our tempo is usually brighter. Um, we, we, we've I don't want to say we've overcome it because it's it, it's still just October, but it, the signs are are more promising yeah. there. Um, I do not expect to drop many points at home for the rest of the season. Whereas we we didn't really know what to expect last season with, with, with all the freshness and, and, and new faces and everything else. The away thing's still the same. Um, who knows when this all washes up, how important that Connor Goldson header will be in injury time at, at Rugby Park. But we, we kind of got out of jail there. We weren't good. We've played two other teams, St. Martin's and Johnson, that are garbage. And we huffed and puffed in Paisley, that's for sure. We, It's either that we scout these teams and go, they're, they're rubbish, we'll be fine, don't worry boys, you know, you can play with your slippers on, we'll be, we'll be cool, and completely disregard the fact that whatever they do against other teams has no reflection of what they do against Rangers. Or, he, it's the other way and it's the other extreme and he whips them up into some kind of mentality that we're in the trenches right from the start and we don't do the things that we do at Ibrooks. we don't knock the ball about the way we do at Ibrooks. we get caught into the maelstrom that is provided by these teams not all of them but you know the ones I mean Hart's definitely been one of them um, and we're a bit confused and it takes us a while to, to get going uh, I don't think this game really was too dissimilar to our first trip there last season, in December. Uh, we started poorly. Hart scored. They could have scored a second from memory last season. They certainly mm-hmm. could have scored a second on, on um, Sunday. And it took us 15, 20 minutes to get a grip. And when we did, we were all right. What we, we lacked on Sunday was the, the second goal before half time. Um, but it there was a similarity about that, that first half anyway. And So that's the fear, longer term, is that away from home, we still haven't quite got this cracked. And I stand by what I said at the the start of the season. The old firm head-to-heads will probably take care of themselves. They are are games within themselves. It wouldn't surprise me if they cancelled each other out the way we did last season. Um, So often, Scottish championships, tight ones, are won in Edinburgh, in Aberdeen. And Dundee will used to be Dundee. We'll, we'll replace that with Kilmarnock, Motherwell, even this season, last season, Livingston. The ability to go away, do your job, usually get the game done quickly and get the fuck up the road. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think there's anything to, to particularly disagree with there. I want to actually expand on one of your points that you made there, such as the mentality going into the games. And... All week, the manager had been stating it's going to be a battle. It's going to be, you know, it's, it's a war when you go to Tinkass. So you've got to earn the right to play football. And I, I saw a, an article on The Athletic where the writer, Jordan Campbell, is a very good writer, folks, you check him out, uh, and a bear. Uh, he said, could it be that, that sometimes he's, he's too focused on that? Because I watched the game back. Rangers weren't out for now. I know that for any for, for some people rather that any time we drop points, we're automatically out for it. Rangers weren't. Um, in fact, they absolutely after that opening spell matched Hearts in that regard. Yeah. Um, they worked really hard all over the field, and what that led to was a cancelling out. There there were no shots in that second half for either side. It, it was dreadful. I mean, just watching it today without the emotion of it, it was a terrible game of football. Scrappy, very little quality, a battle. Um, and Rangers weren't out for it. and that's good because obviously we've seen Rangers teams we remember some oh god pathetic uh, uh, games at Tyne Castle under Warburton where they completely were out for it. but Jordan suggests and I have a bit of sympathy with this viewpoint that perhaps the focus is a little bit too much on that that oh it's going to be a battle get out there and battle and, and his take is look, really good teams don't worry 
about what the opposition's going to do particularly. They're, like, yeah, they're going to be physical, but we've got better players, play our game, and it will make it. And I wonder if Rangers are being allowed, or, or are allowing themselves, sorry, to be drawn into the games that the other teams want to play. Rather, and, and we saw this several times last season. Aberdeen repeatedly springs to mind. Kilmarma. Now, they have done better with regards to that this season, but away from home, is there this lingering desire to go out there and say, right, come on, you're in the trenches, you've, you've got battle today, it's going to be hard and physical, as opposed to just saying, they'll be in your faces, but you're better players, get the ball done, do what you're good at, um, and get through it. Because it seems to me that maybe the reason for these slow starts are the players go out there thinking about the opposition and what they're doing, as opposed to thinking about what we're doing. And it, it's a subtle mindset thing, but it does look in the opening 10, 20 minutes that our players are reactive. And I, I thought yeah. it was instructive that a couple of the, the examples you mentioned actually took a goal, and yesterday was the same, for Rangers to go on the front foot. So it was almost like they, they, they were waiting for something to happen, and then they went, right, we better play our game, rather than just starting on the front foot and saying, right, we're Rangers, we're very good, we're better than you at football, and this is what we're going to do to you. Yeah, there's something in that, possibly. And I think there is a... One does lend itself to being reactive um, when you are, you're you tooling up for a fight and it's that trench warfare thing. And the players do seem to want to feel the first 10 minutes out and see what, what the opposition are going to do um, instead of being proactive right from the, right from the, the, the get-go. I, I'm I, sorry to cut across you, but this, this isn't unique to us. Celtic did exactly the same at Livingston the yeah. other week because I think they were far too focused on because they getting their faces and the kicking. And, and yeah. they, they, didn't, they didn't play their game. Uh, that's, that's the narrative set, and I think, you're, I think you're right. And managers maybe just, and we'll, we'll see in evidence this, of course, with the old firm at, at Ibrox, especially new managers who are still finding their voice and their, their way and their, their, their position. It's, it's a, new, a new job. Um, just overthinking it and outthinking themselves. Um, but one thing for sure, we look as a group of players confused in these games. We don't seem to have full confidence, full belief, full understanding of what, what we're there to do the way we do at home. We will brush teams aside all season long, judging on the evidence we've seen at home. Um, because they're very clear on that. So maybe there is a wee bit of, you know, let Bartlett be Bartlett away from home kind of thing and just you know, mm. let, let them get on with it. Um, Wonderful reference. But it's, um, it's, it's crucial. I mean, it, 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 it's the game, it is the ball game for, for winning the league title, is being able to, to do your stuff. Now, yeah, I think there's maybe something in that. It, it's going to, to the other extreme. Now, you don't, we can't be too blasé about it. Uh, because then you're back into to Warburton territory, and yeah. it's, it's what we'll we do. Next week. Week. <laughs> and it's, you know, yeah. is there a happy medium? Probably that okay. A lot of these teams focus on set pieces. Here's what they do at set pieces. Here's what we need to be aware of. Here's our plan to combat that when we we're in that situation. Other than that, here's our game plan. Here's the way we're we're going to dominate. You are better than that. You would expect this coming Thursday, for example, a lot more. Opposition preparation, absolutely, because they're absolutely. a far, far better team, and we, we are scrapping, we are thinking, we are, we are doing whatever is possible to try and get a result. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, but I just think that yesterday you were up against the outside, not the most confident fans, not uh, particularly enamoured of what they've been seeing, and and we allowed them to play a game that okay, they they still had to work hard. Don't get me wrong, but. It's not a lack of work rate that's seen Hearts where they are in the league. It's a lack of quality. And when we allowed the respective gap in quality not to factor and instead it to be about the uh, out, trying to outfight them, trying to outwork them, and there's no surprise it ended up in a rather scrappy stalemate because that that's what happened. Both teams are professional. They worked very hard. Um, I know that there's this temptation among among fans say, oh, yeah, the, the players aren't working hard enough. And it's not that, or they don't want it enough, or the lack of desire. It's none of that. They just didn't play well enough. They just didn't play up to the, the level that we expect from them. There's just one point on that, David. I, I don't know if there's a relationship here with, I know it's a bit of a hobby also mine, but 
then it's not just Gerard. It's the the big player who goes who goes on to be a manager, and the the delicate psychological management that lies therein. Because players, there's no one in that squad who is anywhere close to Steven Gerrard's stature in, in world football. Is there then a relationship when when someone like that says at home for the most part play your game? And you go out with freedom to play your game. Or in big European games, when we're maybe up against it, here's a job to do. No, the pressure's off, but you know what I mean. Um, every faith in you kind of thing. When he's asking you, almost building you up into into that, that kind of warrior mode, um, maybe that's the kind of pressure environment. When he's ramping the pressure up, I guess, perhaps unnecessarily given the quality of the opposition, that's when they look most timid. And that's when they look in the shadow of their manager and uh, just look, even for that 15, 20 minutes, which was crucial yesterday, just gripped by fear a wee bit. Now, heart and hand are not just here for the the nasty things in life. So before we, <laughs> I think it's maybe obliterate a couple of players, let's, <laughs> uh, let's pick out the ones who did well. And uh, another decent game in the continuing renaissance of Borna Barisic, Rangers left back, I thought. He looked exactly what I want from a left back yesterday, Martin, which was he looked fine. He was totally yeah. comfortable. Uh, his opposite number didn't get much joy out of him at all. He never looked flustered, uh, and certain other of his teammates did. And a performance I just don't believe he could have given six months ago because he, he just looks a completely different player mentally now. And there was there was never a doubt about ability, but he, he just looks settled and Yesterday to me, he looked again, 7 out of 10, the Croatia left back, we don't need to worry about that. And that's exactly what I'm after. Yeah, and it's uh, probably important that you've left three off that, because I still think there's room. And Oh, definitely. He, yeah. he Listen, he, he did his job, his primary job, first and foremost. Uh, and you're right, he, he stopped a lot coming down down that, that, that side. He looked to get forward when it was appropriate when it was beneficial. I still think he lacks a relationship on that side of the park that's going to really bring out the best of him. And hopefully in time, when our £7 million man gets going and hopefully stays going, if he can you know, stay fit and get, get, get into the, the swing of regular football, um, that there's a relationship there. Because when you have over- overlapping fullbacks, they, they are dependent on an understanding and a willingness to pass. I sometimes think that, that players don't seek born out the way that they, they maybe seek other players they out. They 100% pass. don't go down the left wing yeah. the way they go down the right. Yeah, 100%. so that, that has to come in. So I, I still think when those relationships start to um, take hold, I still think there's more from them. And Alfredo Morelos, again, just showing his value to the side. He had... Nothing to work with yesterday, folks, nope. about a couple of aimless long punts up the field. And yet he was the one who, of course, got the equaliser. A great finish. Don't underrate the finish. The header from Katic, uh, it, it comes at him at speed and he kills it, gets it under control, adjusts his feet in an instant and then puts it away. Tremendous finish. He was also... I guess he's so good with his arse. Um, he just waits for a defender to come tight on him. Experienced player like Berra yesterday. A big guy as well. Rolled and Alfie's away and he, he was getting hauled down, much to his frustration. Another excellent display from him. Uh, the gaffer alluded to it. He said uh, he's uh, rescued us today with, with that goal. And there's talk, Martin, Aston Villa. Um, not denying it, uh, Aston Villa are being a, a little bit coy about it there looking for a striker this January. There's talk of a £20 million bid. Now, I've seen... I, I'd be gutted if Alfie goes... Absolutely gutted. And if he goes in the middle of the season, heartbroken. But I'm a fan. I'm allowed to be. I've seen some Rangers fans saying, well, £20 million was the price last season. It's 25 now or whatever. We'll, we'll push. We'll get 30 If Aston Villa bid £20 million for Alfredo Morelos and it's not you know, £2 million down and 18 when you catch us, then he's going. Let's be honest. Yeah, see you after. We... We need to get real just where we are in our rebuilding, where we are, what league we play in. Uh, I'm not sure there's a £20 million player playing in Scotland and there hasn't really been for some time, but 
if that's what clubs are willing to pay, you, you simply know in a position. It puts the manager in a hell of a position um, because you're, you're losing that kind of impact. You're losing those kind of goals. Halfway through a season would be uh, if, <laughs> very difficult to replace, but hopefully some kind of budget. And you've got a window where you're not playing to hopefully um, re, uh, or recruit um, intelligently enough. Uh, but it would be, be a huge blow, not just, you said he's finished, it's everything he did before he's finished yeah. that, that deserves all the plaudits yesterday. Uh, he's what rate? Um, oh, he played, he played them and he's on. We'll, we'll yeah. come to the two people that were supposed to be helping him and they, they were not a factor at all. Yeah. But you're right, as football fans, we're... we're absolutely allowed to forget the economics and forget the reality of, of our situation and just say I mean depending on where we are in, in the, the league come uh, New Year's Day uh, that, that that would be a that would be a very difficult blow to, to come to terms with and if anything could be done um, to delay that for the summer uh, that would be obviously ideal yeah, I, I just I love his wee face, and I want to see it under a silly hat, waving a piece of silver at me. So yeah, I'm quite open about that. Um, he's he's been tremendous yesterday, and uh, picked up his first booking in the league, uh, booked for being Alfie again. Um, other players getting away with similar, but of course it's it's Morelos and Kevin Clancy mm. uh, couldn't couldn't pass up that opportunity. Um, but he ha- he's been just so much better on that front. So Definitely. much better as a footballer. He gets better every year. I, I, I bang on about this, but he does. Every year in his career, not just at us, um, he improves and his potential is, is frightening. And the third guy I thought who came out of yesterday really looking good was Ryan Jack. Um, <laughs> by God, Martin, did we miss him yesterday? Now, I'm sure there are people out there who are big Ryan Jack fans. Um, some of our podders, in fact, they'll be saying, ah, David, you used to always say, oh, I'm not his big fan. Turn me around. This. He's been everything I've wanted in a midfielder. He's been excellent. Um, and by God, we missed him yesterday. We talk a lot about leadership. We're about to talk about leadership. But Ryan Jack does provide that, and he's added to to that. He's added so much to his game this season. And yesterday, we really could have done with his ability to just put his foot on a ball and control that ebb and flow that we discussed. Um... I'm not sure about that, but he certainly provided a lot of energy where it seemed to be lacking, um, a lot of impetus, um, someone who never stops, well, never, okay, never, if, if never he, sh- if he, shucks if, looking for If he'd been there, then Davis would have had more time yes. to do that. Yes. So the, 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 the midfield would have functioned better than it did. So wow. that's probably more accurate. He provides balance. And yeah. he, Davis is our playmaker from deep. He is. Don't, don't confuse those roles. Um, Jack is getting better with his. He's used to the ball, but he's, he's not Steve Davis. Um, but what he does do is provide him with the the, the platform to be destructive um, and to orchestrate. And that that's what was missed. Um, saying that, though, David, we had an eleven that should have won, won that game. game. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Um, right, well, there's there's no delaying. There's an enormous uh, elephant in the room with an armband on, and uh, that's uh, the continuing travails of James Tavernier. Now, of course, uh, the the spotlight was very much on him after uh, a, a very ropey performance in uh, Bern a few weeks ago, and yeah, you know, during that time, I, I kind of tried to stay away from what I felt was was verging on hysteria about him. Uh, it's quite clear that there's a lot of fans who just do not like him for whatever reason and they made their mind up about him and they're going to look for evidence to back up that viewpoint. That's an actual thing, confirmation bias, what humans do. He is giving them evidence though. Uh, yesterday he made a mistake for the goal. Um, Katic lost the header in the build-up. Uh, Stephen Davis had lost his man. There were other errors but his was the uh, the, the leaving a little hole in the Death Star error of of the three of them. Uh, his was the one that really kind of uh, mattered. And then after it, he was awful. Uh, I thought he tried far too hard. Um, his crossing was dreadful. He fired an eight crosses, none of which found the target. And there were 
Echoes of later period Barry and his display best summed up by Rangers being awarded a free kick with 30 seconds left on the clock. Borna Barisic runs over and... Uh, the ideal position for a left footed. Ideal position for a left footer. Plus, I think Borna's body language suggested to me as a, an amateur body language reader, he was saying, you know, you're maybe not in the best of form <laughs> today. Um, he was waved away and Tav duly proceeded to overhit it straight into the keeper's arms. Now... It's laudable that he wants to make amends, but that rarely works. Um, his manager was an example of that back in the day. Um, those of you who remember the slip against Chelsea uh, will remember that Stephen Gerrard spent the second half shooting from, you know, Goodison to try and win the, the game back. So I get it, right? And it's good. He didn't hide. He wanted the ball. He wanted to make up for it. But he just isn't playing well at the moment, Martin. He is our best right back, by a mile. He has been one of our most important players for the last few years. And I have defended him because I do think there are people, as I say, who just do not like him and, and that's that. But there maybe is a space in the middle where someone said to me, and I thought this actually was an interesting point, Alfie got dropped after him. He was suspended, but he was left out the side and he's come back a better player. Nobody's saying James Taver, well, certain people are, but he, he, the, the, this chap said to me, my point's not drop him forever. My point, you know, leave him out of one game, pick the game, you know, not Porto, but leave him out of one game and maybe then he can go away and, and sort of reassess what he needs to do um, to get back in the side. Is there merit in that or is it still a little knee-jerk to the disappointment we all feel after a result in a performance like yesterday? There's a lot going on in here. Um, the Manila's point's Fine, but we don't have a, a Jermaine Defoe replacement for our right back nor our captain. So it isn't happening. He's not getting rested, dropped, whatever. That's a fact. Because the, we you just do not have you know the manager manager was in a lovely position at the end of last season where he could act Billy Big Balls and look tough and say, Sorry Alfie, you let us down that day. We'll see you next season if you're still here. Um, because I've got one of the top scorers in the, the history of the English Premier League on my my books, so um, that that's a nice position to be in. You you, you can take um, ostensibly courageous and and uh, ballsy decisions like that. So we don't have that cover. And where where are these these uh, no risk games that we've got coming up where you can where you can do that? But He's making mistakes and he's making big ones. And we get drawn into this thing. It's, it's the guy who makes the last mistake who's culpable, yeah? And we, we forget there's any kind of collective uh, liability before then. Well, uh, to, be fair, Ad, to be fair, Adam didn't. Adam didn't. No, he was looking for, for um, anyone to blame. Um, mm. But tough. But it, it was. And, and when it's so hot in the heels from Switzerland and... The, the missed penalties and he's maybe just not he just the all season really hasn't looked um as assured still chips in of course and uh, he is still uh, a creative player one of our biggest creative threats and he'll, he'll pop up with a goal of course he will um my bigger concern because there's, there's better players in Tavernier that have made ghastly errors in a, a football field um, it does happen um my bigger concern recently is how much it affects him within a 90 minutes and how much these 90 minutes are tending to bleed into one another. It did affect him yesterday because I do think he then went, and I'm going to make up for that, because he obviously didn't have time to do that in Bern. It affected um, him against, um, uh, sorry, a home to Feyenoord when he, when he missed that early penalty. It did. He, he, he just didn't look... That's the problem. Not that someone is a bit careless... As I said, plenty of world class players who have been, you know, uh, good for that, good for a Rick, if if you like. But the best ones just shrug it off as that's life, and I'll be back, and I won't over try anything. I still have faith in my ability to do my job, and it's as if nothing happened, and that's the bigger issue. And it's not a bigger issue, even then, than Rangers' inability to use the ball as a team which is 
where all the red lights should be flashing, really. Um, but we, we tend, because we're fans, to pick out the moment. And there have been a few of them. And it's the nature of football fandom to give players lots of credit or, or, or none at all. Um, it's it's just the way we are. We were talking over the course of yesterday. It was one of the pods, I think it was Kev. Apologies if, if not, but he remembers a time at Ibrox with a, a boy behind him had was lambasting Kiriakos for a mistake, and someone had corrected him and said, sorry, I, I, that's personal. He said, ah, unlucky daddo. So <laughs> <laughs> it's some players will get credit in the bank, and, and some others have just pissed people off, and the Scottish Cup final will piss me off probably in, until I stop watching Rangers. <laughs> just one of those moments, and it's it's unlucky like that. It's just it's just the way it is. Um, and some people hold that grudge and some people will just dismiss it. And it, that's it's an irrational business, this thing that we do. Um, so that's the the rough with the smooth and the ebb and flow of of of, of fallen football, really. Players will, will get it in the neck and, you know, if he pops up um, in our next big crunch away game um, with, a, with a penalty and a free kick or just something um, it's all forgotten about that, that's just the nature it will be again another test of management uh, about how you deal with a situation because there is no real reprieve there's no one that can be brought to look to have just take some time out what I would maybe like to see is, is a a compromise if you like are just more players within our team stepping up and saying we'll take responsibility for creating things today. Yeah, I, I think that was Give us the ball. And I think that it, it is time to say, that, you know, Tav, right now, everything can't go through you. A, and we've talked about this a lot this season, teams are wise to it and they're doubling up on you. Yeah. Um, which is creating more space for other players, but yet we still tend to focus going down the right-hand side. And secondly, when you've put in, as I say, eight hoorish deliveries, you're not taking the ninth. Um, and it, it it does need that. I feel a bit sorry for Tavin that he always plays, which I, I know footballers want to do, but he, he doesn't get a rest. Most of the others do at some point. Um, and I think now that it is very much having it's that. Sat down for four years. Yeah, basically. And I think that there is that element of um, perhaps mental tiredness. I, I don't know. I agree with you, by the way, that this is a hell of a challenge for the manager. I, I don't know what to do, folks, because he has been very good. And for me, he does have credit in the bank. The manager clearly loves him, respects him. The rest of the team clearly do as well. But he isn't playing well. And he's gone from at the start of the season not playing well to actively harming the team on occasion. It's two games, three incidents, but two, well, um, you know, we, we could go back to Martin Celtic. And we're on a path that if it continues, then yes, he does have to be left out of the side because otherwise... Somebody made a point to me, and again, I think this is a belter, Martin. If Barisic had played like he had for the last oh, month, he, he wouldn't be playing. But that's credit, right? That, that, yeah, that's, that is, how, long, to say how, how, how much is in the account? How long yeah. does it last? It surely runs out at some point. Yeah, well, they just look, even Adam would admit that, that, that Tav can be a careless player. Not, not even Celtic in, in March. Um, Hibs and Boxing Day. Um, there's something... He, he's, he's got one, right? He's, he's got a rick now and again, but he provides so much more that it balances it out. Um, and that's where the management comes in. That's where rebuilding the confidence comes in. It, it's focused on... It, you can't obsess about those things because they will happen again. And it's that's just problem, accepted man. that... It, it, will, it happens, it happens to the best players are out, including the manager as yeah. a player. So it's about just dealing with, with those moments and focusing on what you, what you can do. And when normally when people do focus that, that's where their mental energy is. They're far more confident. And those little moments tend not to happen or certainly tend not to happen as frequent and you don't get a pattern of them. So it's, it's an intriguing situation. Um, in terms of how to, how to handle that, that particular player, I think. The other thing I wanted to discuss, the manager said himself where he, he lambasted the creative players, said they didn't turn up, and, and he was correct there. Arfield and Ojo started uh, with Kent and Stewart on the bench. Kent, understandably, I think that mm -hmm. he was rushed in the last time, and having him on the bench, building him back up, 
much more sensible way to go. I don't know why Stewart wasn't playing. Ojo hasn't kicked his arse for weeks now. And I know stats and, you know, he, he does do certain things. And we've said all season, he's a player, he's a moments player. I get all of that, but he hasn't done any of that for a few weeks now. Arfield, just back from Canada, was exactly how I think most of us worried he would be, where he was running about a lot and having absolutely no impact in the match whatsoever. And I do understand people's frustration with it. You've got Greg Stewart, he's been playing well. Why didn't you pick him? I think the manager does have to take responsibility here. He picks a clearly out of form guy. He picks straight after the international break a guy who has been travelling all over the world and then is surprised when we don't get optimum performances out of them. I think this one sits on Stevie G. Yeah. Um, the, the issue with Arfield and Ojo is that they are moments players. They, they'll come up with something soon. And you're like, fuck, okay. And I think, I don't know if there's something contractual in terms of the loan deal. I imagine there is. Otherwise, what is the benefit of a club loaning a player out? Um, but it looks, if you are a manager who who does enjoy the player who will, I'm sorry if I've misquoted the manager, but has he not said you're going to get a one in four from him or something like that? Something along those lines. That's that you know that is just the way Ojo is because he will come up with the, the goal he scored against Final, for example, and that's very frustrating. Can you afford? I don't know if Rangers can even afford one of those luxuries. I don't. Th- I'm very sure, in fact, they can't afford two. Mm. And that that's appears, exactly my take. That, yeah, yeah that, that appears to be what what the manager is is indulging. Um, Arfield needs to knock Canada on the head, otherwise he cannot play for us after immediately after the international break. Can't do it. We've seen too much evidence now of him just being exhausted, and evidence that when he does have a break for whatever reason, he looks far better for it. So he just needs to be managed better. He needs to be used. Um, more judiciously, um, because at the moment he's he's one of the manager's go-to players, and he has a few of them. Um, that because they've popped up from before, uh, he seems to think they'll they'll do it all the time when the evidence time, yeah. just just. But again, the options, Greg Stewart. Okay, I get the feeling he is um, he's an Ibrox player. He's a clever player that we we have for those deeper teams. Um, and I think yesterday was always going to be about pace. It was always going to be a, an ability to break. Um, I'm not sure. I, I don't know the player inside out, to be fair. But I'm not sure that's naturally how you'd use him. Um, so I, I could see not using that. But again, it's the... Uh, we, we we thought we'd all these wide options, but maybe we don't. Um, I, I I just take a point about Greg Stewart, but again, I think that you know Arfield's not the paciest player in the world either. No, uh, I I just think you you can't keep doing the same thing, getting the same result, and then appearing surprised by it. That's my take on it, and just. I, Aribo is a different. Aribo did not play well yesterday either. But Aribo is clearly one. He's got talent, and two, he's adjusting to Scottish football. And let's not do that thing we do, um, where we've decided inside what three months. Nice pish, get rid of him. <laughs> yeah. Let, let's see how he does because he is talented. Uh, you, you just need to look back over the last two weeks to see that. Um, is the, sorry, sorry, David. Is the Arfield thing not more a, a positional thing as well? It, do we can we? stop with us outside on the right hand side of a three thing I think he just loves the work rate I, I really do I think that he knows that Arfield will buzz about and, and he did yesterday uh, that, that's the thing um, you couldn't say that he looked unfit he didn't but it's mental sharpness it's yeah. how you're doing it it's where yeah. you're doing it and it's when you're doing it and Arfield just wasn't involved in the game at all yesterday and all of that led up to a, a Poor attacking performance. Rangers created nothing. You know, we 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 had one shot and goal, and thankfully it went in. But 
we couldn't say, well, the keeper's made X amount of saves or he's missed two. So there was none of that. Rangers just did not look threatening for the whole match. And as I say, watching it back more, neither did Hearts. That's why yeah. when people said, oh, we were out for it. No, we weren't, right? I mean, and, you know, we talk about players that, that people just don't like. Goldson, I see getting it. And it just seems to be automatic. Now, Goldson didn't do anything wrong yesterday at all. In fact, he, no. he played some fantastic long balls. Um, and he had very rarely did he have anyone to hit. Um, but people don't like Goldson. He's not Nico Katic. Katic struggled badly the first half. Yeah. He did come on to a game, to be fair. But he struggled badly against the big lad in the first half. Anyway, Martin, with all of that taken into account, we have a, a rather tasty fixture on Thursday. Um, Europa League comes calling again, and we go to Porto, where the thing I am looking forward to is um, Alfredo Morelos, who has a, a kind of a slight edge, I think it's fair to say. <laughs> well, he comes up against uh, someone who is known for a slight edge in Pepe. That's a bit tasty, that one. Yeah, he could be getting a, a master class in, in shithousery uh, <laughs> on Thursday. Um, yeah, I think if you, you were looking for, for personal duels, which is, is always fun um, to, to look out for in, 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 in big games, that, that that's the one you look you look at. Um, what's the market like for, for cards on, on that? <laughs> I assume small and tight <laughs> and not generous. Um, because yeah, uh, I think that that will be an interest. And look, it's a good test of Alfie's absolutely you know, newfound maturity because he's going to come up against you know when he goes to roll Pepe, he, he's getting <laughs> a finger up the arse, isn't he? You know, you, he'll do all of those things, and uh, Rangers will need to be. This guy is trying to get you sent off. He is desperate to get you to react. That is what he wants. So it will be a test. I'd look Pepe as a prick right anyone who's watched football in the last 20 years knows this and this is what he's going to do especially now he's not quite a player he was um he's going to try and make up in all the other little areas to try and catch up to i mean pepe the footballer right now will struggle against uh, an in full flight alfredo morelos but that that's nature isn't it as you get older you don't quite have the physical gifts you have but you have know-how in his case uh a professorship and bastarding and he will use that against Alfie. Look, in all honesty, any result over there for us is a good result. If we come back with a draw there, no matter how it's gained, that's a fantastic result for us. Yep, huge. And in a way, it wouldn't surprise me if we did. We seem uh, we seem to enjoy that role uh, in, in those games, uh, more comfortable in that role, um, especially away from home. Uh, but Regardless, there'll hopefully be lessons to, to be learned and in a good experience because it's really the main takeaway, is, apart from money, obviously, from from, from getting to, to this stage um, so soon, I guess, and, and, and playing against teams like us. I don't think there's any any major drama either way. Um, it's a, a, a good break from Sunday, probably an ideal uh, release from what's becoming an already tense league situation which is good by the better yeah, than, yeah uh, uh, like fucking October. absolutely and like that's maybe something we we should say to to some of the uh the younger bears this is what a title race is right you don't go top and stay there yeah. till the end of the season even great rangers teams us and celtic will have they'll have you know weekends where they've got ross county at home and gub them um and then they'll have when they go to livingston and, and lose and that will happen from now to the end of the season. They'll have a weekend, we'll have a weekend. Um, as Martin said, it's, it's going to go backwards and forwards. So it's funny because, you know, two weeks ago, um, people were saying, oh, you know, the, the, the league's not won in October. But then after yesterday, the same people are going, we're shite, we're never going to win the league. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, Scottish football, eh? Uh, it'll never change. That will do us then here on uh, Heart and Hand for this week. We will be back next week. We will discuss the Porto game and, of course, uh, our home match against Motherwell at Ibrox next Sunday. If you want to hear more from us, uh, including Martin's very wonderful, award-worthy show, uh, The Time Capsule, then just go to uh, patreon.com forward slash heart and hand, where for just one ding ding per month, I it's ridiculously low amount of money, um, you will be able to get up to five shows every single day. It's a very entertaining place. Uh, we don't lose many listeners, and I think that that's uh, a credit to the quality that you get there. So uh, go and give that a try. But if not, 
We will, of course, be back here on the free show next week, so never fear. And if you want to come and see us live with my best friend, Kevin Thompson, and I suggest you do, he's a very interesting guy. Come and see a future Rangers manager and, of course, hero of uh, many a title triumph and uh, the run to Manchester, then we will be in Bathgate on the 23rd of November. Um, if you just go into Google and type Heart and Hand Bathgate up, it shall pop and you can come and see tickets moving very, very well indeed. And uh, I, I hope you can come and see it because it is a, a wonderful night. Take, takes a slagging quite well, surprisingly, because if, if I'd done what he'd done in the game and four dicks <laughs> like us, Martin, were taking the piss out of him, I, I wouldn't stand for it. Yeah, you're fucking right, you wouldn't. Um, but uh, he is just a, a glorious chap, so uh, yeah, come along to that. Uh, my thanks to the wonderful Mr Martin Ramsey. Pleasure, David, good to be back. And uh, we'll be back next Monday. Till then, have a good week. Take care, bye-bye.